Yeah, in the studio here, in the Batcave thing, we've got Tim Heenan. Billinook Ward Councillor over here in the Shire. da 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 Batcave. Very good. Good evening, listeners. <laughs> yeah, so Tim's been actually living on the street for the last uh, 10... How many days was it? Um, we started on the 1st of October. What's this we, wee business? You sorry, <laughs> me, myself and I started on the 1st of October and we're going through to the 17th of October. Yep. I'm doing this sleeping out in a cardboard box in Melbourne Park in Lilydale to raise awareness to homeless people. And that's, and that's something that most politicians don't do, so you're not a politician, though, are you? Well, number one, no, I'm not a politician. I'm a resident of Mount Evelyn of 25 years yep. and a fairly passionate person when it comes to community oh. values in the Shire. Certainly, uh, I hear politicians do sleep out, but it's usually one, one night. night. Yeah. yeah, and well, it's usually In a very cover. safe place. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. a very safe place, and uh, Melbourne Park's not always safe. No, it's not. <laughs> you'd, you'd see some interesting things doing this, Tim. Yeah, look, I have over the last uh, few days, and Greg's been there with me a couple of times, and to put a serious note on it, um, it's certainly uh, the ugly side of society, and particularly mm. involving very young people, no, okay. and, and, and certainly some of the things have not been nice. No, okay. I was thinking yeah. on the way in that um, if there's a pecking order in society, then homeless people are down the bottom. Uh, when when you're actually out on the street, you're everyone's victim. You are, and the reason why you are everyone's victim is because of the um, the attitude that people believe that well, if you're there, you're there for a reason. You're there because you take drugs. You're there because you're a thief. You're there because you're an alcoholic. When in fact, as you and I both know, Greg. Uh, people can become homeless just mm. because of mm. a situation of employment. Health issues. Yes. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's all interconnected, I imagine. Like, you know, if, if I'm homeless, I'm more likely to personally turn to to uh, some kind of self-medication, you know, and uh, that's interconnected. But that would be me, you know, as an individual. So This yeah. is a frustrating part of, of the whole understanding of how homelessness exists in Australia. And having done a lot of research over the last um, few months and looking into all of the relevant uh, up-to-date information in Australia, in every capital city, you'll find that a lot of it is not up-to-date. It may be two mm -hmm. or three years old. Mm -hmm. And I think the jury will be out to see how much worse we have become since the ABS statistics came through from 2006. This time next year, I think you'll you'll see an extreme curve that goes anywhere up but not down in homelessness in Australia. There's, there's a figure here that says the latest Vic Health figures show that half the state's private renters aged over 65 are in housing stress, paying more than 30% of their gross income on house, housing costs. And there's... You know, people that pay up to seventy to eighty percent of their income just to just to be able to afford a an untenable sort of uh, or, an, or an insecure housing position. You know, um, it, it's it's correct too. And to talk further more about that, the group that obviously I'm supporting in what I'm doing at the moment, Anchor in Lilydale, Anchor Community Care. Um, says that there are so many different equations now. And just yep. to take the senior citizens in our community as an example, homelessness may not be m meaning that they're sleeping out and rough. No, it may course. be that they're in a land room, that mm -hmm. they're in a caravan in someone's backyard, but it's all only temporary. It, mm -hmm. it can't be forever. These distort the figures because, of course, in some quarters we believe that that doesn't exist. But particularly in the, um, in the Yarra Valley, there is an, an acute shortage of mm. rental accommodation mm. and that in itself opens itself to a, a range of factors which mean that people are going to be so disadvantaged yeah for sure and you know if you look at structurally the percentage of uh, people that actually get marginalized or, or have a psychiatric illness and that sort of leads to to homelessness is uh, a huge percentage compared to the general community i mean that some some people are, are just victimized just because of their health you know and that's to me is a huge huge problem as well i don't know if you've got any stats on that or victimization happens in a lot of cases because when you're out of the norm i can speak personally from experience how i was victimized when i was at school when mum and dad lost their house in 1966 mm. i felt very victimized because of course um we had to move 
Mm. I couldn't stay at school. We had to move again and again and ended up moving about a dozen times mm. when I was a little kid. I certainly didn't understand the circumstances and in those days you could receive a lease which might have kept you going for two to five years. Mm. But ultimately a, a landlord may choose to um, ask you to leave or uh, finish the lease so they can put the rent up yeah. and get the next person in. So to understand homelessness, and it was quoted tonight at uh, an exhibition in Lilydale on homeless people and what they thought home is or that homelessness is an actual way of living. And, you know, I, I really never thought of that, but because there's so many different factors, whether you're in temporary accommodation with relatives or friends or you're in a boarding house situation or you're in the homeless service system or you are sleeping rough... Mm. By any stretch of the imagination, it's still all the same equation as being homeless. Yeah. Like the question would be, what is home? What, what to you is home? Well, we heard, uh, we heard frightening statistics tonight, and, and I'll just quote two rather than go into substantial detail. One was that a young person had been through 12 foster parents, 12 sets oh, of foster man. parents yeah. in such a short period of time. Another young person said that they had been through 20 schools because they'd shifted so much. Well, I don't know how you can become connected to your friends or your community. You haven't got a home. No. And uh, there'd be extreme isolation, particularly for a young person, let alone yeah. older people. Yeah, for so, sure. So, you know, and that's going to have ramifications down the track. It says here, with close to 40,000 people on the waiting list for public housing, affordable housing is the primary barrier to participation for older people experiencing homelessness. So, yeah. It's, to me, a society that, that, that marginalises people that are less so-called fortunate than, I guess, it's not really the average uh, person. I'd, uh, but, you know, it seems to me that, that it uh, gives a sense of insecurity to everyone and uh, a sense that maybe, you know, these process about occupying uh, Wall Street and stuff, I think maybe there's some value in things like mm. that at the moment. You know? There's a lot of social ills in Australian society these days. We can't sweep any of them under the carpet. Yeah, we have to sure. deal with them as a community. They're not going to go away. And this is one that's been doing, I'll use the expression, a little bit of bracket creep in the yeah. last few years. Take, for example, the Shire Vieira Ranges. We've got 2,500 square kilometres of land mm. in the Shire. It's not like sleeping under a stairwell in Box Hill. Eventually, the police are going to come along and say, you know, what are you doing there? There's mm. many places in the Shire where you can hide and a lot of homeless people will do that because they're ashamed mm. of the circumstances they're in. Mm. So we don't know the figures fully and mm. uh, we have to go on really um, passionate church groups and other agencies like Anchor and Anglicare mm. who tell us that it's a, approximately 500 that mm. would be sleeping rough in the Shire of our ranges. No doubt when we get the more mm. of the census figures next year. I think we're going to see a drastic increase there for sure. And I often wonder about like how much male sort of patriar you know, so called patriarchy and the whole thing has got to do with it, you know, like domestic violence and it's one of the things that also has been creeping up quite yeah. considerably yeah. because ultimately at the end of the day a woman may have to leave a family home just with her children yeah. and nothing else. And yeah. there's lots of threats and intimidation mm. accounts where a male may say, look, you know, uh, mm. if the female is not working, if the female has no, only got a the sense children. Of dependency. Yeah. Well, there is. Yeah. You're completely linked. Well, and uh, yeah. once that's gone, once the rug's pulled from beneath her feet, she's mm. got nothing to do but to turn to these agencies.